Hello and welcome to another episode of the SIDREP. Today we are covering more than 25 questions regarding the National Personnel Records Center, such as how to get a copy of your DD-214, how to get records for a deceased family member, how many records were lost during the fire at NPRC, and much more. But before we begin, do us a favor and hit that like button and subscribe, which helps the SIDREP in its mission of connecting veterans with the benefits they have earned and deserve. Today we have Scott Levins, Director of National Personnel Record Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Thanks for flying in, Scott. My pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. This is a very unique topic, uh, one that we get asked a lot. So, you know, let's. what is the NPRC? So the NPRC, NPRC stands for National Personnel Record Center, and it's an office of the National Archives and Records Administration. And it's an office that's located in St. Louis, Missouri. It's comprised of multiple buildings. Um, one actually is actually an underground space in Illinois. And the center is where we store all of the military and civilian personnel records of the federal government. Our holdings in the military side start right around the Spanish-American War, and they go through the late 1990s, early 2000s when the military departments each started on a point forward basis converting to digital. And so uh, roughly how many locations are there and are they spread across the country or? How does that work? So the National Archives has offices all across the country, but they centralize the function of managing military and civilian personnel records in the St. Louis area. And we actually have two buildings, um, one that's primarily military records and another that's primary civilian records. The military buildings in North St. Louis County, it's a, a, a structure that's composed of 15 different independently built warehouse spaces um, that range in size between 20,000 square foot to 40,000 square foot. And it holds about 56 million personnel and related records. Wow. That's a lot of records. It's <laughs> a lot of records. <laughs> There's enough records in that building that if you took the folders and laid them lengthwise side by side, they would stretch from coast to coast seven times. Wow. Okay. And that's still true today, even with, you know, so much stuff being digital or is that, are you still required to keep a paper copy even if it's digitized? So the military departments transitioned to digital records beginning in the late 1990s and they were all had been there by the early 2000s. The stuff that was maintained before that is paper and microfilm. Most of that has not been digitized. So the records are maintained electronically on a point forward basis. So if you're a modern veteran, you separated from the service, generally after the year 2000, your record is probably available electronically and maintained by your personnel command. Our staff can reference those systems to provide records to veterans who write to us. The records that predate roughly the year 2000, depending on the branch of service, those are still maintained in analog formats, but the VA has begun digitizing those in a, a very aggressive schedule. So they are, the VA is trying to digitize the um, records of every living veteran. So if I want to get my records, um, how do I contact you? What's the best way? Um, what's the fastest way? So we don't take requests over the phone because you're going to need to sign under penalty of perjury that you are who you say you are when you submit your request. So the best way to get your records is to go online, go to our website, archives.gov, click on the section for military service records, and you will find a link to an application called EVETREX, which will enable you to submit your request electronically. You can sign it electronically. Uh, you'll receive a service request number, and you'll be able to come back later and check on the status of that request using that service request number. Okay. And about how long will that whole process take roundabout? So it's a function of what you're looking for. So um, as I discussed earlier, because of we operated with strict occupancy limitations in that building throughout the pandemic, we grew a backlog that is the largest it's ever been in the history of the center. Okay. Um, a year ago, it had eclipsed 600,000 requests. Okay. I've checked with my predecessors and their predecessors and never been that high. Now we've already reduced it by 30%, still too high, but, but we're down to about 380,000 today. Our approach to bringing the backlog down was to work all the requests for DD, to restore service on routine requests for DD-214s before we deal with other types of requests. We know that if you request your DD-214, it's most likely related to some sort of benefit application for you. And so we continually ingest those cases ahead of other requests that are still pending. So if two requests come in at the same time, one is I need my DD-214. Um, maybe I'm trying to apply for a home loan or something like that. The other one is um, I want to know what grandpa did, you know, during World War II. We're going to work the DD-214 one first. 
we've eliminated the backlog of DD214 requests. And that makes up 60% of our work. So like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna probably receive 26, 27,000 requests this week. 60% of them are gonna be for, I want my DD214. Our 90% of those requests are being serviced in less than 10 days last week. Average time about six days. So, so if you just ask for your 214, expect to get it right away. If you ask for a complete copy of your record or other types of things, it's expected to take a lot longer. We're aggressively hiring new staff and hiring more contract laborers to support us. We've got a, a model that shows us eliminating our backlog, restoring service to 90% service in 20 days or less by the end of the calendar year. So it will get better. But right now, we have a lot of people who've been waiting since the pandemic. Prior to the pandemic, like on the day it hit, on the day we sent people home, um, we had 56,000 cases pending. And if we're doing 25,000 a week, that, you know, it's about two and a half weeks uh, worth of work. Man. So that's where we're trying to get back to. <clears throat> a lot of busy people. That's a lot of busy people. <laughs> Connect with the benefits you earned and deserve. Visit news.va.gov for current events. Sign up for the Vet Resources e-newsletter. Subscribe on YouTube for content like the Sit Rep and VR5. Or follow VA on social media. Visit the video description below and get connected today.